the, the DJs, obviously, it was Danny Rampling. He was the first DJ that people were, would sort of follow, like they would follow a band. Probably 20 people going, Danny, Danny, and all that. I was like, this is great. This is great. I could do this. This is me, you know. It was great to see people being so passionate about music, you know. And they really were into it, because I'd never seen that before. You know, maybe they were in the hip-hop in America. They weren't... There wasn't that passion about it here. This guy called Graham Ball, who... Um, He'd run clubs, various different clubs, and he'd managed Blue, Blue Ronde, La Turk, and he'd worked for Spandau Ballet. And uh, he'd done an itinerant club called Westworld. And that was the sort of cool, trendy club. Got hold of um, this place called Subterranea, which is underneath the Westway. That actually was owned by that guy called Vince Power, who does Mean Fiddler. Anyway, this place took, took off really very, it was a very cool, very hip, place and it went on for two years and I basically played there every Saturday for two two and a half years it was very culty and then it was more like hip-hop funk you know a little bit of house music it was more West London groove and everyone else was playing house at that point so I came in from from my sort of roots but I, because I was doing something different to what everyone else was doing it really stuck out so that's how I built my rep but then as I started to travel all over the world, you know, you, you were looking for music that translates more than that kind of music did. So, it, you know, I gradually evolved. I started DJing every weekend at the end of the 80s and then haven't stopped <laughs> since.